we have a Juan Francisco Valdez in for questioning? Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview, too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch anything. Can you beat that? <laughs> Sounds like we don't want to keep this guy waiting. It's this way. About time. Are you the senior officer I requested? I'm Detective Phelps, and this is Detective Bukowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate, and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend. Let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Valdez. Counsel General. I insist on my full title. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place, a Dewey Brothers by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires. bought a Packard, Valez. A snob like you doesn't drive an American car. I want answers or I'll smack you around the teeth. William Dewey offered me a substantial bribe to make a purchase at his establishment. It is not unusual to make this kind of transaction in the civil service. Well, tell that to the Argentine taxpayers. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the council garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flogged. Unfortunately, we don't do that here, your worship. You have a pretty good idea who stole the car, don't you, Consul General? Are you gonna tell me, or do I shake it out of you? There's no call for violence. I suspect a disgruntled boy from the car dealership. You have a name for this kid? Gabriel, like the Archangel. I have no surname. So tell us about this kid, Gabriel. You had a run-in with him? Mechanical. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. We do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. You fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you? Oh, madman! This will cause an international incident. Danny, Ben, Miguel, Tristan, and Teddy. Full lips. Ring any bells? I'm sure we can come to some arrangement.
Gabriel, spill it. A beautiful but impertinent boy. I mentioned rendezvous and the young man went quite insane. I thought he was going to kill me. I was prepared to pay. We'll be in touch, Consul General. That bum took a swipe at me. I put him down with my sack. Finished with Valdez. Thank God. I'll get rid of him in a couple of hours. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Uh, where are we going? Mr. Valdez moves in some peculiar circles for an international bon vivant. Ah, English, please. See, this is why nobody invites you out for drinks. It's just very industrious of him to be so involved in matters of consular transportation. All right, you're making it worse now. I think what you're trying to say is that lover boy in there is as full of crap as a Christmas goose. That is well. Don't tell me, let me guess. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four-door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating the theft of a Packard belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective, but I know how we can find out. Follow me. We keep all our tools in here. Mind if we look around? Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car? Huh? Maybe a used car. I have some nice used cars for guys in your wage bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? Go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. One left. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three-quarter. I don't think so. Seems irrelevant. No good. We need diplomatic plates. Everything here is going to be relevant. Circumstantial.
If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Packards are great cars, but this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know Valdez? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. And I know a shyster when I see one. You and Valdez are in this together. Me and Valdez? I hardly know him. Valdez wouldn't wipe his shoes with me. We found your contact details in Valdez's notebook. He had to be calling you for something, do we? Okay. So I met Valdez in a bar. We cut a deal, and he bought the car through the embassy. I cut him some change on the side. It happens all the time. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. He sure as hell isn't here. Address, Dewey, or my partner shoves her head in a car door. Okay, all right. Apartment 3, 103 Hill Street. And tell him from me, if he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Even bastards to steal anything the minute your back is turned. Stop lying to me, Dewey. The thieves work for you. You can't prove that. Go ahead and try. Like I said, my tools get stolen on a regular basis. You don't want to believe me? I'm not going to say anymore. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dewey. No problem. God damn that kid. I'm just an honest car salesman. Seems like you just don't know who you can trust these days. Go into movies, Dewey. You're missing your calling. We really ought to take more time over the past. Packard Phelps. Let's head back to the empty lot. Can you drive to this one? All right. Where to? You read this story in the Examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X.
Okay, let's see what Gabriel has to say for himself. I just hope our Archangel hasn't already flown. What are we waiting for? What the hell is this guy doing? Uh, where do you see a number three marked on that door? Yet. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Gabriel Delgado here, Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Ms. Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay with the broad. So how far along are you, Anna? Nearly 20 weeks. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor and he's not around? You are wrong about Gabriel. He will be a good father. Already he works hard to provide for It's difficult to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from Unless the scene. Unless you help us here, Anna, your little Certainly one Gabriel will be pride and joy. for a very long time. Serving breakfast for two, Anna? You should have cleared up. We really ought to take more time over the Packard, Phelps. Let's head back to the empty lot. Optimistic call. I doubt it. Not sure this means much.
It looks like Valdez gets his wheel back. Diplomatic license plates. You're in serious trouble, Miss Rodriguez. But Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. He has his honor, no? His honor, Anna? He said Dewey's friend tried to make a woman out of him. He no longer respects this man, Dewey. He took the car to show this maricon that he is a man. Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. You keep lying to me and I'll send you and your baby to jail. He lives here, but he hasn't come home. I swear it. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. He was here last night. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. We found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. I know nothing of these car parts. You want him home as much as we do, Anna. Tell us where we can find him. You pretend to be concerned for me, but you would take him straight from here to a cell. Gabriel wasn't at work. Where can we find him? He said he would never go back. Gabriel is out driving around in his car. If you don't tell me where he is right now, Anna, I'll put an APB out on him and ask them to shoot on sight. Please, please don't kill him. I can't tell you anymore. As soon as we corner Gabriel, we'll be back for you, Anna. You had your chance to cooperate. Let's get out of here, Phelps. Don't worry, I've got an idea. Never understood it. The more rotten the boyfriend, the more loyal the girl will be. She's going to warn him, Phelps. We need to follow her.
That ought to do it. Now get back in close. Too close, Phelps. You're way too close. You've got a pretty funny idea of what keeping a low profile means, Phelps. Now would be a bad time to forget how to drive, Cole. Forty-seven, requesting assistance at First and Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street race. Stay on Delgado. He's getting away. You're gonna lose him. Is our boy, forget the others. Take him out.
Gabriel Delgado, you're under arrest for Grand Theft Auto. Fuck you, puto! You should speak to the maricón! Valdez, I showed him! Now who's a man? I should have burned his fucking car! You got a foreign dignitary out it as a fruit and a kitty raper. A car dealer we're gonna let slide for the kickbacks. And a street punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That, Detective Phelps, is not a bad haul. You keep your chin and sign. You keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing, and we need more of it in this department. You have any plans for Weekend Liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before Liberty. Good job, Kelso. Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Full inspection. It had better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. Kelso, this carbine. The bore is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelso? Do what you need to do, Sergeant. You know the bore is immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. Uh, Two-day oh, field drill. Man. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. I'm telling you, it'll never stick and you'll get roasted. When is America going to understand? They weren't even his friends, and he still confessed. I don't want to be rude. You're behind the wheel. Looks like the DA is going to press...
Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Because a white male named Lester Patterson walked out of the bar and into the street, car hit over there, and he ended up here, dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, named Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Phelps? Landed on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. Madison has life insurance. We can notify next of kin. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Careful where you're stepping, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. Body traveled a good 20 feet. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. She's all yours, detective. Knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife.
Doesn't tell me anything. Doesn't give me anything to go on. Not much help. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Go on. Then a third person. Another man got involved. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. It's pretty dark, Miss Perry. You sure about the car? Of course I'm sure. My Uncle Bernie has one just like it back in Topeka. It's in your best interest to work with the LAPD, ma'am. One day you'll find yourself in trouble and needing a cop. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. Why are you lying, Lynch? What are you covering up? Is that the best you've got? You expecting me to confess to being the driver? I'd suggest you speak to someone who saw what happened. I'm about done speaking to you. Do you know the victim? Yeah, Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Why do I get the feeling you're holding out on me? I'm not trying to hide anything. Just if it's all the same to you, I'd rather not speak ill of the dead. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? What was it about? Who knows? The slightest thing could set those two off. Stalling just makes us more inquisitive, Lynch. We'll get to the bottom of this, with or without you. That guy has a serious attitude problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need a list of dark red Lincoln Continentals. Just a moment. This is going to be quite a list, detective. Cross-check for registered addresses. Top of the pile, anything from the downtown area. Around Bunker Hill. One moment. Fred Murray, 120 South Olive Street, between 1st and 2nd Street. Harris Jones, number 1 Dillon Lane. William Shelton of 738 West Temple Street. That's all for downtown. You've got that, Detective? Thank you. 
Might call for some leg work, but it's better than nothing. You can drive. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? Yes? Hello? This is Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, I beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? 
Any messages? Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks. You know the way. You can drive. So, where do you want to go? We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there, and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. You can drive. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. Oh, they're whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of them, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, shut up! You had all the bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do, do with it. You think I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake! It's too late, Sabo. Stop or I will shoot! God damn. Last chance to surrender, Sabo. Come on, Flatfoot, let's negotiate. How long do you think you can hold out? Help me! You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. You know what bugs me? Someone still hit that guy and didn't stop. As soon as the address on that red Lincoln comes through, I'll send a prowl car to bring the driver in.
So I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Phelps, Mikowski. Beat cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there, see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. 